Cyberdo for me here. So the Xbox full screen experience is a much bigger deal than you might think. I've been using it like crazy on all the devices that I can install it on. And I've learned a lot of backend things that not a lot of people talk about that completely change the way you feel about your handheld. And I know it's a bold statement to say that this Xbox experience can replace SteamOS, but I'm about to show you what I mean when I say that. So I want to bring up one of the craziest parts about this whole thing, right? Once you install this Xbox experience, your Windows handheld becomes controller friendly where it's not supposed to be controller friendly. I mean, take a look at this, right? So when I power on my device, we all have to deal with this unskippable lock screen. But now when I swipe up or I press A, I can enter in my password with just the controller. So that's cool, right? That gets rid of the need to use the touchscreen right off the bat. And then right as I log in, you can see we're presented with the Xbox home screen. And there's like a lot of backend stuff, which I'll show you that normally, you know, with, with any handheld, except for the Steam Deck, of course, we have to kind of configure things a lot. You know, you have to swipe it up and then maybe do a hotkey to open the keyboard because the keyboard's not working and this and that, you know. But I'll tell you this, when you do install the Xbox experience, you're, you have a lot more confidence with your handheld, right? You know that when you press it on and you, you start to play your game or you're trying to get in there to play the game, uh, it's less problematic, less of like a hassle, more like let's go into the game, right? This is what you have me for type of vibe, you know? So the reality is what I do is when I boot into my handheld, I open up Steam and it automatically puts me in Steam big picture mode. So now I'm running two launchers, which is a little weird on paper, but you get super used to it. And I use Steam big picture mode as my game launcher. And I utilize the benefits of this Xbox experience, right? I utilize the controller friendliness. So adjusting settings, it is very responsive. Multitasking, all of that stuff is now super freaking easy and super fast. But I still have that Steam OS like big picture mode in front of me and the difference is steam big picture mode on the desktop experience of windows that is just a shell right and it's still a shell in this xbox game mode but it feels more stuck in there like it is what it is with windows compatibility battlefield 6 is coming out a lot of us are going to want to play it with the steam deck you've got no luck, right? The anti-cheat's not compatible with Linux, so you can't play it on the Steam Deck or on Bazid or SteamOS. But now I can kind of feel that Steam Deck-like experience or just have that handheld experience, but now I can totally rip Battlefield 6 nonchalant with no problem. Say you want the best of the best when it comes to frame generation and make your games far smoother than they actually are. Well, I can use the Windows version of Lossless Scaling, which is the best version at the moment. And I have that incredible scaling and just, you know, that frame gen. And it's, it's super simple. You can just switch back and forth like that. Or if you want to do cheat codes, right? It's kind of hard to do cheat codes with SteamOS. But if Dying Light the Beast gets a little too scary at night, you can turn on Wiimod and just rip it all, all the way through. You get to do so much more with Windows. And now you have that controller friendly experience. And at the end of the day, this is this is the way I put it with, with freaking handhelds. The biggest thing you want out of a handheld is convenience. Also, you guys don't have to sob if you don't want to sob. If it's your vibe, it's your vibe. You know, you do you. But another interesting thing you should know is that, as you can see here, I'm booting into Steam Big Picture mode. But the Xbox, the main default home screen is literally just the app. It's the Xbox app, okay? So when you take that into account, like you you comprehend the fact that this is just an app, you can get rid of it, okay? And you still have all the cool stuff, right? Like this, you know, the Windows management. You have all of this, and you can just use whatever launcher you wanna use. And then if you want to play your Game Pass games, you can just click on home, right? Then it launches the app. You know how you can download widgets on this? Like there's like a little widget tab 
You could put Spotify, things like that. But there's this widget called One Game Launcher. And this allows you to import anything from the desktop into the Xbox experience. So that means that I can use Wiimod. I can use Discord. And it's all there in front of me when it comes to the convenient multitasking that we now have. Do you see that? Like... Finally, I can just switch between the two, whereas on the original Windows, right, on desktop mode, if I'm playing a game, I have to swipe up here, and sometimes, like, crap like this happens where it gets in the way, and it's kind of like a hassle, you know? I want you to understand that at this moment in time, obviously, this is in beta, right? Everything we're seeing here is not finalized, but Microsoft is Microsoft. So what we're seeing here is probably what it's going to be for another two years. Unless it's another price increase. I'd be very impressed if they start whipping things up super quick. We'll find out, we hope. But here's some things I'm noticing with this, hand, this experience. Number one, you know, this iPhone has liquid glass, right? It's got this cool fluid-like feeling to it. You know, you look at the Steam Deck OLED and this has like this SteamOS it just has a vibe to it, from the sounds, to the animations, to the color palette. You know, it gives you like this little immersive game center. And what I've noticed about this Xbox experience software is it, it, it just doesn't hit right. It feels a little clunky. It's responsive, like it'll, you know, you, you put down, you press down on the D-pad and you know, it's going to go down. But it, it's so sudden, you know, it's so like, it's just not fluid, you know, it's not smooth. It feels a little like jagged in a sense you know so aside from that there's obviously you know they claim there's battery and performance increases to be honest with you in my experience with the msi claw the legion go the rog ally i've tried them all i don't notice a difference in performance and i don't notice a difference in battery some people say it actually affects battery pretty heavily compared to just windows desktop mode and especially compared to steam os at the moment right there can be a lot of back-end things that they can tweak down the road to really fix that issue. And as far as performance goes, I mean, some guys were saying they get like 10 FPS increase on like the Tomb Raider. Some people are saying there's better performance. Some are saying I don't notice a difference. Personally, I don't know. Uh, nothing crazy, you know. But the biggest thing I want to bring up, I think is so freaking cool that we're at this point now. And that is freaking docking your handheld. The way it's set up with Windows is originally you would dock it to an external monitor with a mouse and keyboard because it's a PC. But now you can you can do that. But now you can dock it just like this right here. Boom. It's connected to my TV. I turn on my Xbox controller and I'm using my Xbox controller to open the games, to close the games, to switch between apps. I'm doing everything with just my controller while I'm sitting on the couch. Which means that it's kind of like a switch now, right? I can just plug it in and play my games. And I've been using a lot of GeForce now on this 4K TV. Here's my internet speeds, but I cannot tell that I'm streaming. It's freaking insane. But so one of the biggest reasons why we love Bazite, you know, SteamOS and the Steam Deck is because of the freaking, you know, the sleep and wake function. That thing is so sick. And with this Xbox experience, as you can download right now, it, it does not work. There's nothing going on. It's the same crap that you're used to with Windows. You either hibernate it or sleep it and take the risk. Um, they say, you know, I, I was out there and I talked to the guys that are doing this stuff and, and they're saying like they're working on it. They're trying to make it to where it's like a, a mesh in between hibernate and sleep. Um, it draws a lot less power. It's still wakeable super quick. And maybe we'll get it on the release of the Ally and the Xbox Ally. Oh, um, but at this moment in time, you just have to stick with the hibernate and booting in and out of hibernate mode actually doesn't like interrupt the Xbox experience. Um, it just takes more time than sleep. Um, I haven't noticed it glitch out or anything. Um, so that's pretty cool, but I just want to sum it up right here now. Like we finally have this controller experience for windows. And so if you want steam OS, like th the way I see it now is I would use steam OS for a power efficiency right if i really care about my battery and if i really care about a quick sleep and wake function which is those are the two 
biggest important thing is, yeah, Stimos is going to be a lot better with that stuff at the moment, right? But if you want a, you know, a controller-friendly experience, a console-like experience with the accessibility of Windows, that is where I'm telling you that SteamOS could replace, or Xbox, this Xbox experience could replace SteamOS um, because there's a lot of us that like to do cheat codes. You know, we like to mod games. Um, we like to do all these little tiny little freaking things that SteamOS doesn't let us do, or we play a lot of games that, multiplayer games that just aren't compatible with SteamOS. This is now your opportunity to have that better experience and then all the accessibility in the world. But so to get it, this whole Xbox experience installed. Oh my gosh, hold on. Basically what you have to do, bro. I think we're good. Oh my, okay, hold on. Forget it, okay. What? See, this is why you need Xbox experience. Okay, so you have to go into your settings on Windows. And then if you go to Windows Update, you need to make sure you are on the 25H2 version. So to do that, you have to go inside the Windows, Windows Insider program. And then you have to enlist to become like a tester. It's super easy. You just log in. And then you choose the pre-release build or the dev build. Doesn't matter. Once you have this installed, you should run some updates. Um, you will go into your settings and if you click on gaming, you should see full screen experience. If you don't, like like for me on every hand I love done, um, there's a little command thing you gotta put in. And I'll put the link in the description. Once you enter in those little commands, um, this will pull up and then you're good from here on out. I'd say like time wise and effort wise, and difficulty wise, installing this is is half of installing SteamOS. It, like it's probably like eight minute, 10 minute te thing. Um, and then once you have it, you're freaking good to go. It's nothing too scary or crazy. So, but yeah. Cyber Dopamine out.